Hi. Welcome. Hey. Where am I? <laughs> uh, how did we get here? <laughs> Let me out! You found us. Hello, everyone. Welcome. I need to click away from the chat so I don't have to see myself talk to myself. Uh, welcome <laughs> to uh, Horizons Unknown. A, uh, yes! Yeah! Hey. Woohoo! Super excited. This is going to be a uh, Starfinder actual play stream of the official Paizo adventure path called Horizons of the Vast. Uh, I'm going to go around the table first of all, uh, let everyone introduce yourselves, uh, name, pronouns, character, character pronouns, and if you have something funny you want to say to break the ice before I throw up. Um, <laughs> from nerves, from nerves. I'm, I'm perfectly Well, that healthy. helps. That helps. That's but, a good start. Uh, yeah, that can help uh, as well. I'll set things off. Uh, hi, my name's Don. I'll be the GM. Hi, Don. Hi. Um, <laughs> hi, Don. Hi, Don. You may or may not know me from the homebrew Starfinder podcast called Hexgrid Heroes, which uh, we're using that Twitch channel for finally. Aha. Uh -huh. Told you. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, I'm super excited to be running this. It's uh, quickly become one of my favorite APs. Uh, the the you session even started it yet? I know uh, the session. Yeah, prep... all that prep has made it amazing for you. Yeah. I'm so excited to it's, get in there. It's really helped me level up as a as a prepper. Uh, just in my other games, like oh, I have this number of NPCs that are going to be with you along the way. So I've really stepped things up, and I hope that translates well for you. I hope you all have fun. Uh, fun fact for me. I'm really, really nervous. Uh, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're used to doing just like audio only, huh? I'm, yeah, I'm used you're to hiding, hiding I, this I'm... and doing. For a lot things. of us, this is our first live thing. Yes, yeah. you know, a lot of us are podcasters, uh, yep. <laughs> but not. Or not. Or not. <laughs> or not. <laughs> yeah, some of us make cookies. Yes. Uh, so yeah, I'm just going to go down the line as uh, in order of that I see in the uh, the chat that I said I was going to look away from, but I lied. Uh, Pan, introduce yourself. Uh, hey, I'm Pan. Um, unfortunately, I haven't got a camera at the moment because I'm unwell and I look like crap. So I'm going to save you guys the hassle by looking at Gary Payne instead. Um, I'm from the podcast Cosmopunks, um, as well as a few other ones that are non-Starfinder. Um, I... Um, be looking forward to this actually it's late for me but um when don came into the idea um and the the cast sounds so cool and i checked out the shows and stuff and i um looked at them, so I thought, oh yeah i could really vibe with these guys so uh so here i am i i do want to point out that i i gave i info dumped on the basic premise of the ap and then before i hit send i put in all caps like this is the time zone. If that time zone isn't okay for you, please let me know because I, I really appreciate you staying up for us. And we have. A I couple... said no, but he just browbeat me until I came along. So I, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you guys. Like he I flew really all the way to England and showed up at my door. <laughs> Anyone who knows Don knows that that is true. <laughs> he yep. hacked my webcam somehow. I don't know what's going on. Yep. Uh, I was wearing my mask, so you're welcome. Uh, but yeah, uh, su super grateful that uh, someone from the UK could join us. So. No, when, happy to be uh, here. Happy to be here. The AP looks pretty fun. Yeah. Uh, you're a cool dude, and I'm happy to play you guys. So good stuff. Quoted. Um, and we also have. I do want to shout out. Uh, we have a couple UK listeners in Krifu Bernal of Manapot Studios. Uh, a couple other people. The, the chat's moving a little quicker than I anticipated already. Yes. But thank you. Yes. Uh, excellent. We want that. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you. UK UK <laughs> gang, rise up. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> they go to bed. Rise up. Yeah. Go to bed. <laughs> yeah. Those of you that are in the EU and those who are not in the EU. You. Thank you for showing up for this. You're awesome. A little topical yeah. humor there. Yeah, um, <laughs> and we'll uh, move on to Jeff. Hi, I'm Jeff McAllen. I am playing, oh, pronouns he, he they. Uh, I'm flexible in that. Uh, I'm playing Tomo, who is a N2 colony, pronouns they, them. And um, I'm from Emergency Power Podcast. Uh, as a player. Woo! <laughs> That's about our entire audience right there. <laughs> no, no, Emergency Power Podcast is, it, it's wonderful, delightful, 
uh, their their GM can tell you a little bit more about it when it gets to them, but uh, it, it immediately uh, sparked my brain once listening. I hit up the, their players uh, via social media, and we we quickly uh, started to make plans to do something. A lot of this yeah. sprang from them wanting, like, no, let's collaborate. I'm like, I just did a 10 player collaboration. I may, <laughs> I may need a break before that word gets thrown around, but yeah, I'm just Yeah, listen, happy. we couldn't do a 10 player collaboration with you if we tried right now. <laughs> yeah, I don't Never know how again. you did it, dude. I was there and I know how you did it. Stress, that's how I did it. That's amazing. Um, but, that's um, so impressive though. Yeah, really uh, good work. Uh, yes, uh, on top of that, uh, Jeff has been monumentally important to getting the stream up and running because if you were here for our tech rehearsal, we <laughs> had uh, we had some things to work out. Like I can prep all day long, but uh, Jeff's technical acumen has been great. And I hope that Thank he you. is at least not the first PC killed. <laughs> 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 So I can repay oh. the kindness. <laughs> yeah, uh, I try. Thank you so much. Yeah. I appreciate the kind words. Um, I'm trying. This is my first time live streaming using OBS. You know, I've used it a little bit because our our podcast started out as a video uh, element, mm -hmm. but uh, we ended up dropping that just because the technical side of editing a video oh, show boy. was <laughs> was too much for us. So we switched over to audio only. But I get to still use some of the stuff that I picked up, so. Yeah, we built some skills. Unfortunately, it's gonna help out here. Yes, uh, and I do wanna throw a shout out to a uh, viewer currently in Japan, uh, Mark of uh, also what? Vanapop Studios. Wow. <laughs> dude, nice. great, great dude. I got to play with, uh, got to play in a Starfinder stream. Uh, we got to bond a little bit as uh, characters and I, I just saw that he popped in the chat and it's it's great to have you all. Your, your crew has, uh, really hyped me up to get over the nerves, but uh, they're still there. Um, but uh, next, uh, I'd like to introduce Carrie to podcasting. <laughs> yeah. Hi, I'm Carrie. I'm with Critical Hit Cookies, uh, which is a cookie company specialized for gamers. But this is my first time streaming podcast anything. So mm -hmm. I was mostly doing OK until all the experienced people were like, God, I'm nervous. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What, what are you talking that. about? <laughs> we didn't so, have a full blown panic attack before this started. Come no, on. No, not at all. And we waited to hold off that panic attack until like five minutes, and then, <laughs> then we like the, the four of us. Uh, we couldn't see Pan doing it, but it, we were basically hunched over. Rocking ourselves. I went outside. I went outside and tried to a bit. It's fine. Of course. Yeah. We're, Carrie's fine. Our, We're fine. We can do this. Carrie's our ace in the hole because with all those cookies, we can bribe Dawn for like free nat 20s and stuff. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I'm going to use that when I roll as well as Please. I normally do. Please do. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. Um, so yeah, talk about your character for uh, I, I hype you up more. Uh, my character is Rora. She, her. She is an Urog Nanosite which is a new class for me. It's a new class for most people. Um, so I'm excited to see what all that can do. Yep, uh, super excited as well. Uh, I, I've, I've helped two people now build nanosites and as a GM for them, I'm terrified. <laughs> a lot of abilities. Thank you, Paizo, for inflicting that upon us all. Uh, okay. It's, it's going to be fun. Uh, your build is particularly exciting to me, so I'm, I'm very excited to see how you break my encounters. Um, but my yeah. pleasure, honest. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, recruited Carrie because she plays in an offline game of Fly for Your Die with me, and she's just she's just so sweet, so accommodating. Uh, it, it's it's and. I know she hasn't been in stuff, so I thought, oh, here's a chance to get someone in, and uh, it's great to have you. Thank you so much for agreeing to play it's this. It's my Thank pleasure you. to be here. And yeah. I just realized that I can pull up the character art oh, onto cool. the stream, so I'm go. pulling yes, up. Yes, let's do it. I'm pulling up yeah. Laura right now. We yep. can go back and do uh, Gali and uh, Tomo. Okay, but uh, yeah, so yeah, Carrie, uh, I know you're jumping into this uh, head first. Uh, appreciate the hell out of you, and I hope... <laughs> I Thank you. Your... My pleasure. Yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, the art of this Urog was done by our next player, Adam. So why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and uh, take the praise for this amazing artwork. Yes. 
Uh, first off, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, uh, my name is Adam Domus. Uh, I am the GM for the Emergency Power Podcast. Love the um, yeah, thank you very much. I, I like to do a lot of hand gestures, so anyone watching is definitely gonna see that. My hands are just gonna be like flying across the screen. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, I play Sifrix Varfalus, also known as Hull. Uh, he's a dragonkin vanguard, and he's big and likes to do big punches. <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, Adam, part of Emergency Power, quickly, you know, we, uh, our conversations, uh, mine with uh, Jeff, we got him, we got a group chat going, really wanted to do it, wanted to do something, and I'm like, oh, this is great. Just uh, excited people doing homebrew. And uh, if, if you could, uh, so we can get it on the record before Drift Crisis drops, uh, uh, give give the, the viewers at home a little taste of what your campaign is, because it is just dynamite. <laughs> oh, well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Yeah, no, uh, <laughs> it's kind of funny because, like you said, the book that's kind of coming out soon has a very, very similar premise to something that, you know, our podcast is, which is like, these guys are on a ship, something goes wrong just as they're trying to shift into the drift, and then they wake up on this planet, they've crash landed, the ship is destroyed next to them, so all of them are trying to figure out, like, where are we, what's going on, how did we get here, like, and, uh, you know, I landlocked them a little bit, even though Starfinder's about, like, this big, huge thing. But, like, they're stuck in the system. They have to figure out what's going on in it. And I've thrown basically everything, including the kitchen sink at them so far. You can ask Jeff. Like, <laughs> we were having right some. Head, I think. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, if anyone wants to go check us out, we're the Emergency Power Podcast. And we would love to have more listeners. And, you know, we just want to. Basically, our motto is sit down and charge up with us. So just like when your week's been rough, just sit down and let everyone else have to deal with all the problems. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things that uh, drew me to your podcast was uh, your excellent handle on branding, which I <laughs> I fumble and stumble and drop all the time. So like, like oh, these guys know what they're doing. I had to listen to them. It's great, great stuff. Um, and uh, excellent. Another, we fooled people. <laughs> <laughs> another international shout out uh, to Steve. I don't know how to pronounce your last name. I'm sorry, uh, but if you are in uh, TTRPG uh, Discord servers, especially around the Paizo podcast, Steve is a huge champion for all of us that do our work. Uh, just, just uh, great, great guy. Uh, he's helped uh, a couple other streams I'm in. The Galestrian's greatest uh, PF2E stream I do. Uh, Steve is uh, always there to let me know when my music is uh, not loud enough or if anyone's uh, not coming through. So uh, I haven't gotten any DMs from him tonight. So I think. Nice. So far, Jeff has done about. what I couldn't do. <laughs> and uh, we're, we're so off happy. to the races. Yeah, yeah. So uh, thank uh, you. I'm really quick. I'm putting up uh, the art for Tomo, and now I'm going to show everyone the art for yep. Galatea since we yep. forgot about the, I forgot about those. Yep, yep. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, no worries. Uh, it's not like you're multitasking at all, Jeff. So yeah, <laughs> uh, Adam did the art for Tomo, Rora, and Hull. Um, uh, Pan, uh, I don't recall the, the name of the artist that did your wonderful art, but uh, Jeff, when uh, we have a moment, throw that up as well. It's just oh, sure. so she's cool. On, she's on Twitter on the Naughty Chippy. Um, okay. She's not yeah. very much, but she knows kind of like what kind of stuff I like. So I was like, okay, I want this kind of character. And she really nice. like, banged it out. Um, yep. Yeah, no, it's very cool. I was looking at it earlier. Yeah, I'm going to get a bunch of different shirts. She's going to have a bunch of equally terrible t shirts. Awesome. Yes. Uh, I, so if I anybody wants to suggest like a, a band or something, I'll put on a shirt. Yeah, please do. Um, yeah. Awesome. So, uh, we we're, we're on here. Uh, follow uh, Hexcrude Heroes on Twitter for more details on stuff you want to chat with the cast. Uh, we can post a link to the Hexcrude Heroes Discord server if you want to chat about the show. If you're watching this later and you can't do it live, please pop in, say hi. Uh, it's it's a modest server, but. Um, if you want to hang out and pitch some ideas, I'm happy to help this channel grow. This is my first, 
uh, real foray into Twitch streaming. So I have lovely ideas from a lot of the streamers I've watched. Uh, very little know-how of how to make those come true. Um, but if uh, you, you hit me up and uh, are patient with me, we can do it. I do have plans to uh, get some channel point things going on. So some of you can like use points to buy rerolls for them and me. Uh, don't we be oh, we're gonna just, need just, it. We're gonna yeah. need it. No, none for Don, just for us. Yeah, don't don't get Don. So why why waste it? Yeah, can <laughs> can we buy a negative reroll for you? So like yeah, you can. Yeah, I'm fine ever. with that. I'm fine with taking. Yeah, I. Uh, <laughs> yeah. All the time. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, <laughs> introductions out of the way. People are praising me in chat, and I just can't stand that. So, um, <laughs> so Don's running away. <laughs> uh, I guess we can. Uh, we'll relay guess, it. Don't worry. Yeah, I'll. Uh, I guess I can talk a little bit about the adventure before we get into the first scene. And uh, the, the the story goes: uh, a solar system out in the vast was uh, discovered to be uh, uninhabited. As one world in particular was uh, snagged up with. Uh, had some scans done of it, Weidana 4, the fourth planet in this system, uh, in a joint effort between the Vescarium and the Pact Worlds Alliance. Uh, they decided to divvy this planet up into parcels and let certain uh, mega corporations, groups, um, the Starfinder Society grabbed one up, so they have uh, representation here, but uh, our PCs are part of a team that they call themselves the Hexplora Corps. Um, <laughs> because exploration rules will be used in this. So I guess those of you that don't know, this <laughs> is going to be a, uh, a wilderness kind of survival game uh, mm -hmm. with some settlement creation, settlement management. Uh, it's been marketed as Kingmaker in space, uh, but it's it's that and a whole lot more. Um, there's gonna be some fun, fun exploration rules. There's gonna be some weird uh, movement traveling. It's gonna be a lot of fun. There's a lot of new monsters, creatures, and mysteries to unfold on this planet. But the Explorer Corps, this team was recruited by a silver dragon named Xenolidi of the Dragon Corporation, Xenolidi Labs. And actually I have um, a little handout because I made a quick thing on Canva on Ooh. foundry so yeah i've 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 Fancy. i've used skills here that um nope not that one <laughs> okay so close okay oh uh, look at that yeah oh. so uh it's very, it's very cool. basic let's let's temper the praise but uh yeah uh, just just simple <laughs> oh. it's a uh a dragon led dragon corp on the planet of triaxis uh Zenilidi recently lost their partner to a draconic disease called uh, hepadystrophy, uh, a form of hepadystrophy, and they are just um, beside themselves with grief. So when this opportunity came around, uh, Zenilidi Labs put a team together, and um, I'm gonna get the adventure going, so you know how <laughs> everyone knows everyone, we're gonna explore together because uh, this team has 5d6 days of drift travel. Oh my gosh. And we're going to get to that <laughs> roll together uh, once we get to that, but I want mm -hmm. each of five of us to roll that D6 so we all share the pain of how long in <laughs> drift you're traveling to get to this far off world. Um, this, this project to populate this planet and settle it is called Project Horizon. And um, Horizon is going to be uh, a theme in our branding, uh, the show's name, Horizons Unknown. We had a lot of name options. Uh, those of you who <laughs> were here early enough for uh, the pre-show know uh, Pioneering for Dummies is uh, another one that I think fits because um, when uh, I, I talked about there's gonna be settlement management, you have to do this, uh, there, was, there was a bit of a pregnant pause of like who's going to help be in charge of that so it's going to be fun to see how we do it uh it, it's not going to be as tedious as many fear i feel uh Pizone, the starfinder team did a great job of revamping like kingdom management so it won't it won't be uh pulling teeth but uh we'll do the first couple here and if if it's truly unwatchable we can start to do some stuff offline but i definitely want to show people what it's like because part of this system is uh, part of this game is 
you are in charge of setting up this settlement. Uh, you have a, a host of NPCs that you need to uh, assuage and appease and do jobs for, but they still answer to you. So you will be the one making the decisions of where resources go where. So I definitely want people interested in this. If you don't play this AP and you want this in your game, I would love to have played this as a homebrew and I probably will one day. <laughs> but for now, uh, wanted to get in on the new hotness of this AP. So yeah, do it. I, yeah. let's do it. Yeah, we're gonna right. get into yeah. it. Uh, first, first little scene. Uh, we're gonna begin uh, on the planet of Triaxis in the Pack Worlds. Uh, those of you that are familiar with Starfinder will know Triaxis is a world uh, ran by dragons and dragon shoot-offs, uh, offshoots, like the Rhyphorians. <laughs> dragon shoot There are plenty of dragon shoot-offs. There are gonna... dragon shoot-offs. <laughs> 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 but uh, yes, uh, we will be starting out uh, in the busy spaceport in the Triaxis city of Prieta. Uh, all around you, I don't have a, a map for this, so this is going to be theater of the mind. I am going to use uh, as many art pieces from the books as possible. I'm not much of a map maker myself, uh, but so there will be some things that will be theater of the mind. Uh, but this one, you know, this... The spaceport is just humming with activity. There are very large ships uh, being uh, filled up with passengers. Dock workers are kind of scrambling around for final preparations for this ship that's due to launch this morning. It's a cold day as Triaxis is currently two thirds of the way through their centuries long winter. So as soon as this very boxy ship opened its cargo doors, all of the passengers just fled inside uh, and started to <clears throat> and uh, started to choose their bunks. And I do have some art for what this ship looks like. So, um, Jeff, if you could zoom out to just show the entire interior of the ship. Sure. Jeff will also be handling that portion of things. And I can't thank you enough, Jeff, because I'll be bouncing around five different programs and apps and tabs to do this, but- It's hard enough DMing. Yeah, so this is the ship called, oh, oh not that one just yet. Uh, I'll show you the exterior in just a moment. It's uh, cause I, I did some art things to it, but it's big, it's boxy, it's square. It is known as the Burnished Dawn, a Compent Star Settler. Uh, this thing is uh, designed just for hauling settlers uh, to worlds, and this thing is going to break apart, not break apart, it's going to disassemble <laughs> itself. <What? laughs> oh, let me off. Okay. Hold on. I, I forgot to we tell you this. We can all breathe in space, right? Uh, I forgot, yeah, I'm sorry. I forgot to tell you the six book series ends at the beginning. <laughs> um, but now this, this ship, it's, I'm looking at the art right now and I'll show you in just a moment once we hit space, but it's just a big, big cube. Think board cube with extra functions because this thing will disassemble itself into the component parts of your settlement once you arrive, if you arrive. <laughs> uh, that sounds You're like ready. we might not. Yeah. <laughs> but I rolled it's, up two characters, I'm good. Okay, yeah, it's, it's not... <laughs> real pretty as far as uh, specifications, but uh, damn it, it'll do the job. And uh, this, this ship is quickly filling up with all the settlers that are joining. Uh, there's, a, there's a fair amount of art for each of these. Some of them uh, will be upcoming. Some of them I just don't have art for just yet. So uh, we'll play around with uh, the NPCs. There's a lot to choose from, a lot of characters, a lot of uh, mid 20th century actors I'm going to be imitating to bring them to life but uh, they just they just file into this ship and the last four to board will be the four of you as you walk up in the cold um, and I'm gonna go I'm gonna go in the order that's in um, our stream so uh, pan uh, you want to throw up that art one more time and describe uh, galley what she looks like what she's about uh, we haven't really revealed classes yet either so oh yeah okay um okay so galatea uh galatea Sorel, um gary is a patra they're kind of a cat person race uh they come from vesk uh six um she is um kind of kind of just lazily like like dumping around uh she's dressed shortly like she just got up and remembered she had to be somewhere <laughs> 
she's got um, long braids uh, that end in sort of um, uh, neon fiber, so they actually glow at the bottom. I was yeah. gonna say the artwork makes it look like they're luminescent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They are on the inside. So cool. Negative two to stealth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what? Go ahead. She can, she can, she can dim and change them. Um, they're, they're just like a really, really lazy way to do her hair. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, she's just, a, she's a technomancer. I think I mentioned that. Mm -hmm. um, her pronouns are she/her, um, and she's, uh, she's just, uh, just chilling, really. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Uh, she can't, she's yeah. kind of like wondering if she can like you know get away with not doing what she's supposed to do. Okay, so so her her uh, appearance is probably passive right now, not real excitement like you saw the other people. No, she's uh, she's definitely more like okay, no, I, we're doing this fine, okay. I guess. Right on, <laughs> awesome. Uh, Jeff. All right, let me pull up uh, Tomo's art one more time. Mm -hmm. So uh, Tomo is a N2 colony. They are an ooze person. Uh, so think like um, they, they were modeled off of the, the fungus that like mind controls ants and stuff in real life. Mm -hmm. uh, but Tomo is like a teal blue um, and he, they are a solarian. Uh, specifically, I'm going with the uh, the new tech revolution, Electromagni Solarian. So yes. they've got this uh, Solarian moat that is electrically charged, and uh, they're they're coming onto this ship. Uh, there might there might be some other reasons, but they're signed on as uh, quote conflict resolution. <laughs> Slightly ominous. Oh, like, <laughs> I don't know what to do with that. So Tomo's walking up as an ooze. He's wearing armor. So he, he they, they, sorry, they keep a a humanoid form, or are they? Just yeah, they're, weird? they're not. They're not completely uh, like moldable. I, I think statistic, like in the sheet, they have the amorphous property, oh, yep. but they still maintain like a relative shape like at least that's the way i'm playing it uh so they they appear like uh if you've seen star trek the next generation when uh, i think it's season one or two when they're on the planet with that big black tar looking guy uh the oh, one that's, that, that's season one yeah, yeah. The, the one uh oh, yeah, the, 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 yeah. It's so that's funny. That's Spoilers. One of, that's one of my favorite episodes. I can't. I don't, I don't know. For should I? Yeah, from like 1980s. <laughs> uh, uh, well, I was yeah. just gonna say spoilers. The alien that killed Tasha Yar. Uh, and those of you uh, keeping up with current Trek, uh, that monster uh, has been uh, used in the animated series Star Trek Lower Decks. Oh yeah, oh, I saw that. I died. I'm like they like they are pulling all the stops for this. I'm sorry to interrupt, but just that that blue. We we, we talked about it yeah. a couple weeks ago. I'm like, I should have watched that episode again. I'm sure it's aged well. Yeah. So N N2 Colony are really cool. Like I was just, I was in love with the flavor of them. Like they, they merge with other non-sapient species in order to essentially uplift them. Kind of like we have uplifted bears. Their intent is to like uplift them. So this isn't canon in Starfinder in the Paizo, but head canon, canon that I'm playing with, uh, Besides the arm cannon that you see in the art, um, I appreciate is that. <laughs> that um, they they seek out these races to to uplift when they see potential in a, in a species, and so uh, that's like culturally that's what they uh, they tend to do is, and, and I will also point out this won't probably come into effect for many uh, books in the adventure path but tomo is seeking you know a species to uplift they themselves they've never done that before uh but when the n2 colony merge in my head canon uh they go from be calling themselves like i to us or we you know it, uh like venom type like it's a symbiotic relationship 
Yeah. And then at that point is when I'm saying that they adopt uh, the gender of whatever they, they absorb with. So specimen. Oh, yeah, that's, gotcha. that's the head canon. That's why they go by they, them right now, because they have not yet. Uh, I think I, in my backstory, I wrote intertwined is what I called it. Mm -hmm. uh, that sounds less vile race. than the way the bugs do it. <laughs> no, it's not malicious. It's not malicious. They also feed on thoughts. Um, mm -hmm. Definitely not malicious. <laughs> just kidding, not not malicious. <laughs> yep. They're they're a very uh, you know they're they're very sensitive to the emotions of others, and so that's kind of why Tomo was appealed to this conflict resolution not necessarily in a combative way uh -huh. um you know they tomo seeks a uh, peaceful resolution if at all possible i will also point out i don't have artwork for this but tomo has a pet empathnid uh it's yeah. a little little spider uh that um though they are also known for being emotionally aware and uh so they share that in common. Uh, like they're, an emotional support nice. spider thing? It's an emotional support <laughs> spider, yes. Uh, their name is Felix, Aww. with two E's. Felix. Of course they are. <laughs> we, just, we just skirted Aww, a copyright you, you ban, so... <laughs> yep. Twitch only allows three, so that was going to be our first strike. So good job for <laughs> switching it up. Excellent. I'm very excited uh, to see how they how they uh, integrate themselves in this party and with uh, unsuspecting, unlifted sapient species in the future. I'm really hoping it's something weird. Um, okay. Uh, uh, Listen, the up. weirder things you put in this adventure, the weirder things he can merge with. <laughs> That's I'm right. just going to go look at book four real quick. Yeah, uh, I can also make things really weird because uh, N2 mm. can reproduce asexually. So, like, we get on this planet, I could just start <laughs> throwing out N2 colonies uh, everywhere. We just, have, we just have an army. Just <laughs> <so>. <laughs> Oh man, I do not know. Like, I don't want to know what this ship looks like by the end of this <laughs> six rolls worth. <laughs> you just be lucky that Tomo is way past puberty. Oh. <laughs> oh. On that note, uh, speaking of weird alien species, uh, Carrie, what's uh, what's Rora about right now as she's uh, headed towards this burnished dawn starship? Rora is um, not chill. Like Galley, <laughs> number one description. Not into not conflict sure. resolution. Uh -huh. Rora is very excitable, very excited to be part of this expedition. So she's probably running around like saying, "Hi, can you believe that we're doing this? This is so exciting!" And also, Urogs, which is her species, are known for being blunt because they're thinkers and they don't like to waste a lot of time with, uh, you know, the niceties. So she might have a slight tendency to interrupt people or try to get her point across if she thinks she has a better idea. So we'll see how that goes for her. <laughs> um, and if you can't tell her pronouns are she, her. Um, but the alternative that she also has going for her is she's been working for Zenaletti Corporation for a while now, and she's actually a lawyer, so she... <laughs> has a serious side to her that she can do the job. She's just normally a bit excitable about it all. <laughs> Very cool. Uh, I can't wait to have to deal with that. Uh, <laughs> because, because Tomo got to go into the uh, reproduction si system. Uh, tell me that weird thing about Urogs that I find fascinating. Urogs? Oh, yeah. Uh, um, <laughs> Buckle up, everyone. If you don't know Urogs, they are... Uh, first of all, I, I'm not going to give away the, the punchline here, but they're silicon-based uh, life form. Large size. So... Well, they have yeah, I had to, I had to like, do some research when I was drawing it, and I read about this. So, Carrie. Okay. They have two things. They have electrolocation, which, if they're in contact with the crystalline or metallic circle, they can detect the presence of other creatures within 60 feet that are also in contact with that surface. Cool. And they it, don't it. eat. What? They literally 
process molecules out of the atmosphere and take in what they need that way. <laughs> I was gonna, because so, you said they're silicon based, I was like, do they eat like a bag of microchips? No. Like, no, 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 bad. I don't even need to worry about it. So when we're horribly lost and starving, I'm gonna be good. <laughs> yep. You'll be the only one to come back. We'll just be like corpses on the ground. And you'll be like, hey guys, uh, I got the info. And... I'll, I'll, I'll take a buggy back with at least one okay. of you. Yeah, I'll, I'll, be, I'll make it back to you because I can feed off of Rora's thoughts. So we'll like, Rora will keep me alive. <laughs> the, trauma, the trauma of losing half the party will keep one of them alive. Yeah. And, yeah. and on the road back. So, so Rogs, they, they float. They, like, they don't have a fly speed, but they kind of hover just above the, the, the ground surface. Am I remembering right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, <laughs> so cool. So cool. Um, mm. So, and she's excitable. She's ready for this. Uh, we kind of, seems like we have a little bit of a moody teenager uh, off to the side. I don't remember uh, uh, Gally's age, so apologies. Okay, she's, she's like 25. Okay. She's, she's, so, she's, just, she's just moody. Okay, so we got the moody person walking up. We have the ooze uh, eager to propagate their species, and you're excited uh, to to set off on this expedition. Uh, Adam, tell us a little bit about Hull and what they look like. Yeah, absolutely. Actually, I'm going to set the scene a little bit on how they got on this ship, because as far as I understand, like, (laughs) To get part of this crew, you have to be very specialized. You have to know some stuff. You're going off in this new frontier. Like, you got to know what you're doing. So, the ship lands on the planet. Hull hears about this and the fact that it's going to be just taken off and leaving the pack system, just going off in the middle of nowhere. And he, being a dragonkin, like 10 feet tall, massive wings, missing one left arm, big green scaly dragon, huge armor, just walks up to the front of the ship where everything's getting loaded on. And the guy was like, oh, uh, are you on the list? And he just like puts a hand on them and slowly slides <laughs> them to the side and just like stomps his way on. Cause like, he's never met anyone who would rather be in front of him than behind him in a fight. So he's like, I'm gonna go on. They're not gonna kick me off. There's not a chance. How tall are you? Because I'm looking at the, the, like, information for Dragonkin, and the average height is, like, this ridiculous range of 8 to 20 feet. (laughs) What? (laughs) Do I need to make um, a hole bigger? Yeah, he's, he's, can't, he's not the, like, huge category, so he's just shy of that. So he's, like, 13 and a half. So Amazing. he's, and he has to like duck to get in. And now we're on this cramped cube in space. He's like crawling on all fours through the, the ship. <laughs> no, on all threes. Threes, ah, sorry. Threes. My mistake. Yep. Excellent. So uh, th- this is our party, uh, everyone. They are walking onto the ship. Uh, this is the final boarding of flight burnish dawn to Waydana 4 via Xenolini Labs and uh, as you get on uh, the map I, it's the, the the adventure doesn't really start till we hit the planet so I do want to like do due diligence and show you what the ship looks like where you'll be spending time but once you get on board uh, once the two large creatures squeeze their way through the hallways uh, looking at the map um, I'm going to place We'll, we'll meet that person in a little bit. I'm going to move Rora. So that's the elevator that Rora's in. Uh, Rora and Hull, uh, you won't need to share the room in the elevator. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get I, to share the room most of the time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I suppose uh, Tomo could uh, squeeze in and uh, you just... Come down yeah. here. I fear for the poor guy who's in I'm okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll wait for the next one. Yeah. So uh, you, you board the ship. Uh, as you as you board, um, engine sounds all around. Uh, I, I hope the music's playing just fine. But uh, you get in, people are milling around. They're getting to their stations. Uh, you, you met with everyone, and we're going to explore interactions and relationships with these people as the story progresses. But... Uh, just to get us to the planet, I'm going to hand wave a bit. A, a part of this AP 
uh, around the settlement building is um, uh, busy work, paperwork, uh, going through the the, the, the the process of collating and all this kind of reporting stuff that we will make interesting, I promise. Uh, but there's going to be time skips in this. Uh, some things take uh, a month, of, a chunk of time, a month long. And we're just going to like, okay, in this month, this is what happened. So I'm perfectly content to be doing time jumps. Uh, and there's going to be one soon. But as you get on board, you see people. There's, we have uh, scientists, we have engineers, we have um, hunter gatherers that call themselves uh, feud procurement uh, uh, officials. Uh, there's, there's um, communications officers, security guards. Uh, there's just a, a whole host of people that I think everyone but Hull will at least know on a, a name basis <laughs> <laughs> since Hull kind of uh, cut the line. But um, and, and I'm excited to play that up because uh, all of them know who's in charge of this. And uh, Hull, as you're walking along, you're getting second looks because they met the people in charge and they didn't meet with you per se but we'll get into that once we get to the planet uh and in in the interim time uh but you get in get on board get in the elevator uh one one then two at a time uh and i'm gonna take some liberties and just move you guys all to the bridge i can just highlight and move things haha uh, but all around you uh the the cargo bays are all Full to full to fill. Like the, this thing is packed to capacity. Uh, once it gets uh, above orbit, it's going to start to break apart. And as you're walking along these holds, you can see like you know where um, airlocks will shut. And like oh, this is this segment. And a lot of the people you go past are going. Uh, those that are studious enough to do so are going to their areas and you know making sure everything's there looking at manifest and not a lot of people are giving you a lot of time because you all know you are in for a bit of a slog as far as flying to this planet in the vast but you get onto the bridge and sitting in a chair swirls around I'm going to show this NPC um, a a female Yisoki uh, in business attire, not business casual, business attire. She Business formal. <laughs> business formal, thank you. Business, uh, business. She, she swivels business. around. <laughs> she swivels around in her chair. She has her legs crossed. She has very aust uh, not austere, just she looks like this. Uh, <laughs> I think that more or less explains it all. Honestly, you know, I've seen this so film mad. before. Still like ah when I see her. <laughs> yep. Uh, all all props to the art people, the art directors, the artists uh, at Paizo for truly capturing this this lovely being's self in just this image. Uh, she has this look. Uh, somehow, even though she is an Isoki, she is small. She is looking down her nose at all four of you as you enter the bridge. She That's stands up. Feet. She just <laughs> leans back really far. <laughs> she uh, so stands up. <laughs> yep. She stands up, adjusts her blazer, suit top. I don't. I'm not really. Amazing. Thank you. Uh, and she just had a very simpering smile and says, "Ah, my friends, you finally made it to the bridge. We're ready to depart now. Is everything all right? Oh." I my child, I don't think I've met you before. Are you on the right expedition? And she's looking at you, Hall, and she's just kind of got that sneering smile that doesn't reach her eyes at all. Gareth is following <laughs> her gaze towards Hull and she's being like, my child. <laughs> right, like, how old are, how old do you think I? Uh, <laughs> this place is, uh, this, this is going out of the Pact Worlds, right? Yes, of course. Yes, we are. Then I'm in the right place. Okay. Uh, well. And he, like, uh, crouches down to talk to her. <laughs> she She's unflappable at this point. Uh, she looks to you, Aurora, looks down towards you. I think you're probably about uh, eye level with Tomo, or she's eye level with Tomo, and uh, looks at you, Galatea. Well, last minute changes will make difficulties when it comes to rationing supplies, but Zen and Lady knows best. For now, 
Anyway, I have to see to my room. Balco, the fool, has decided to room me next to the willow ants, and I'm changing cabins immediately. And she just kind of shuffles right past you. Uh, just not even shuffle, a click clack of her heels, <laughs> pounding. Just like the shoulder checks people on the way out. Yes, yes. Uh, she, she's Those wise enough. Spiky pads, oh gosh. Yes. How much damage do we take? Uh, <laughs> D4. Yeah, <laughs> Who but, is uh, the manager and can I warn them that she's coming? <laughs> you you four well you you four are the managers. Um uh, you know what? Back. it'll make sense now. Right? Oh, uh no. so y- the bridge is yours. It's empty. There's no one else sitting here. The uh the pre flight countdown has finished. Uh um I don't know if I'm gonna reveal this about the AP just yet, but uh, we don't really have set starship crew slots. So any of you with a piloting check that would like to take the helm can uh, feel free to go in and give me a piloting check. That is not me. Uh, <laughs> but I will I will turn to Sifrix uh, and say, you may partake in my shares of rations. I do not eat much. Oh, I don't need it all. You can you can have my rations. This is all going really well so far. Excellent. Can you fly? <laughs> yeah. We need well, someone to fly. Yes. Uh, he, uh, That's what if. <laughs> he walks over. <laughs> <laughs> and he will absolutely try to fly this thing. Oh, it may yeah, not this... go well, but... <laughs> so these, these starships are designed... Oh, oh damn. Awesome. That was a sense motive right there. Oh, Nat was... 20. Did you? Yeah, that was, I think, on me. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I can remember, I can detect emotions. Okay. Uh, so, when, you know, I guess we can get into it right now. Uh, what sort of mechanical benefit process are we going to be dealing with here? Um, if, if you can detect emotions, that's kind of up to you. It's let Minus. me tell you what it is, sure. uh, it because it's a it's the racial ability for N2 colony. Um, it just says I have blind sight emotion okay. with a range of 60 feet in combat. That's pretty simple to understand, but I was imagining it something on the level of like Deanna Troy. Mm hmm. Um, where like I don't know their thoughts exactly, but I know the emotions that they're given out. Yes. And okay. so you can maybe, however you want to do it, maybe it's like a bonus to sense motive what, to see if they're lying. I don't know. Whatever. Okay. I, I'm flexible on it. Same here. Yeah. And uh, do you have a way that uh, Tomo flavor how you visualize Tomo uh, observing this? Is this like uh, Neo looking at the Matrix? He sees red blurs. He sees. Like, you know, is this Xavier seeing mutants and non-mutants? I'm going to make all the references. So <laughs> if you are on my level, I apologize. Yeah, I think that's a great way to put it. Like, to, to put it into perspective for those of us, like, me in real life that don't have blind sight emotion, I think, yeah, it's like a heat map. And Tomo understands, like, that this color represents this emotion. And so... So you're like the predator, but for feelings. <laughs> yes, I'm the predator with feelings. That's a right. great way to put it. Awesome. Awesome. Cool. I think, cool. Yeah, the more references we make, the more likely it is someone can catch hold. So, no, I appreciate stuff like that. So, Tomo, with your uh, nat 20, as you know, a natural 20 on a skill check isn't necessarily a success, but damn. At, oh, here's something I uh, we need to announce. Um, typically, these games start you all off at level one. Uh, because we are all seasoned Starfinder players, and because um, level one wanted... sucks, because <laughs> level one sucks, because John's nice. More yeah, the latter yes. than the former. We all tried, I've... and Don said, "Okay, fine." Yeah, so I've I've <laughs> upped the difficulty on some of the lower CR encounters. I've done some work. So you all started at level three. Uh, you're all yes. experienced in your fields in mm, what you do. Spells. So wanted to give you some more toys to play with. So your 25 cents motive what does it first off what is hull's current emotional state 
He just wants to make sure this thing kind of gets off the ground before they decide to kick him off. So when it's like, well, you guys are going to be flying the ship, he's like, okay, let's go. <laughs> and uh, yeah, but it's pretty easy to sense you would not need a 25 to know that he's sure. not super confident in piloting. He could probably do it, but maybe not great. Okay. So a little bit of okay. urgency, a little bit of maybe not quite panic. Yeah, no, he, he's been through enough combat that panic isn't something that necessarily always comes up, but it's like, okay, let's get this done now. Okay, so uh, I guess I'll ask, I'll throw it to you, Jeff, if you have it now. Like, what would Tomo, you don't have to, like, make a, make a spectrum of what each color means, but uh, you sense all of that from this person as they take the, the, the controls of this ship. Uh, and I will take that uh, pilot check now as you start to, uh, uh, like, lifting off is fine, you know, I'm not going to I'm not going to bog some things down with minor things. The ship's going to get off the ground. But uh, this is you lifting off the ground into space, leaving the world of Triaxis behind as you uh, start to plug in coordinates to the Weidana system. You scrape the side of the, the, the ship. <laughs> <laughs> uh, first, uh, Hull will lean back and be like, anybody want to be a uh, co-pilot? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll go, I'll go. And she's gonna um, pop in <laughs> next to, like how big is yeah, your chair? Hull, Hull will scooch <laughs> over so he tries to fit on one chair cause he was like in two before. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> and she kind of politely waits. She's like, okay, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, you know, I can just lean over. Is that easier for you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking up all the armrests somehow. Right, right. Okay. okay you know you what, ready for this? I'm just gonna sit on your lap. <laughs> right on. Um, so I guess uh, sure. so the way that, that so works. The way you said it, it clearly you're trying to fish for uh, an assist uh, aid <laughs> yeah. check. So, uh, <laughs> Galley, give me that pilot check to see if you assist first, because the assist come before the actual check. Let's see if you All help. Right. Here's a question. Sure. Uh, can can I <laughs> assume the quote captain role and encourage? Yeah. <laughs> sure, sure, buddy. Okay, I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna rest a, like, a, a slimy appendage on Hull's shoulder and say, <laughs> "You just need to believe in yourself. You can do this." Right? Uh, yeah, definitely. I I do. Thanks, uh, Squishy. Thank. And uh, I do have sidereal influence, but we haven't really established whether I meditated or not, so uh, I can hold off on that. Mm -hmm. Like, this is our first situation. Literally just get the ship going, and we're already pulling shenanigans to try to get away with more. <laughs> yes. <That's>, uh, so... <laughs> 19. Yeah. Okay, so first off, Galatea, your aid does go. You, you do aid, so um, Hull, you will have a plus two to this check. Uh, Tomo, remind me the rules around captain checks and stuff. Um, it depends on like the tier of the ship. Oh, I have uh, an answer. I, oh boy. <laughs> yeah. This is a this is a tier five starship. Oof, that's gonna be a high DC then, I think. Uh, let oh, me no. check captain actions it, real quick. Is it fifteen uh, plus one and a half? Oh no, uh, encourage is only a DC ten regardless. Okay, so yeah. Uh, you're uh, oh, sorry, DC 15 with diplomacy, uh, which I still succeeded at. Okay. And okay. Uh, what, so what, I got what benefit plus four that, totally? I think so. Is that plus two? Yeah. Plus okay. two from you. Well, there's also computers on the ship. I want to help out as much as oh, I can. Nice. There will be a Please plus... do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the computer. You need to make a... me look good as when I roll a two. You'll you get know? an additional <laughs> plus one. So a total plus five to your piloting check to plot a course. Nice. Can't fail, right? right? Right, guys? Can't fail. Not even right, the gods absolutely. can slow you down. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. Oh, no. <laughs> that is a grand total, with all of that, of a 10. <laughs> Did Hulk get nervous? <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I don't think most of you will even be aware that he's not doing so hot. Um, maybe Galatea, because you're on his lap. Yeah. But... Uh, there, and maybe Tomo, uh, depending Since on... a little like, panic. Maybe, <laughs> maybe. But, uh, yeah, so that's that's the role. Uh, I can't tell you what that means, wink. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I'm just gonna you, pull out you that said this was character. gonna end at the beginning, so yep. <laughs> I got you covered, Don. Yep. So, uh, I, I thought you knew what you were doing. 
I know exactly what I'm doing. The this cube is like spinning in the wrong way, okay, and like you, you just push it, it to the side. To the, your, yeah, no, um, this was definitely made for uh, pe people with two arms. That's you, you, hold on, just, the, uh, putting, no, no, not not that port. We're going through that port. You're that putting is your the hand right, right, on all the buttons. It's <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah, it takes a bit longer, but eventually you do get the green light to uh, the power down the engines, and you're going to shift from the material plane into the drift plane, which is a uh, the kind of the background of the ship map is kind of drift esque. So uh, it's big purple magenta clouds all over. There's you know seasoned players of Starfinder can will, will know all this and more, but uh, those who may not know, the Drift Plane is a plane of existence. It's a transitory plane where you enter it from the material plane. You travel a certain number of days, depending on how far you're going, where you're going. Um, but for this, because you're leaving the packed worlds to a system far beyond mapped known space, this is going to the vast, horizons of the vast. So at this point, I'm going to ask all of you wonderful people to roll me a d6, because 5d6 days is how long it'll take you okay. to get and, there. Uh, yeah, Don, I was going to suggest also that we start using self rolls because I oh. want to make sure that we announce whoa, whoa, whoa. our roles for the audience. Oh, and uh, if, if we see each other's roles, we might react before we know what's going yeah, on. Yeah, I just did it right there, so <laughs> probably dang, a good dang. plan. Okay. So I'm gonna switch my rolls to self-roll. Okay. Can the audience see the dice um, on the screen? Not currently. I can fiddle with that for next session, because I would like that. Yeah, what the? cool. Oh, you got All a right. point roll. Okay. okay. That's very cool. Very like, yeah. cool. put a question mark on the dice, so it's like, yeah, it's I don't nice. know what this is. Oh, really? Okay. So, I have... A one, a one, a six, a four. Tomo got a five. Okay. Nine, 15, <laughs> oh. It is going to take you 17 days of drift travel. Uh, the max obviously being 30, so it's going to take about a little more than uh, average. Uh, but that's fine. You have plenty of time, plenty of rations to get you to the planet itself. Unfortunately, this starship is just used to transport people to a place and get you set up. There's no fancy drift drive. I'm not dividing it by two or three. You are, for all intents and purposes, stuck on this ship for 17 days. Uh, and the way I've flavored it in games is there's a bit of a countdown timer of how long it takes. So, um, I guess if you would like to, we could uh, do a couple extra rolls of, you know, each day we can try and cut it down. But basically I'm just gonna screen and wipe us to the planet after we kind of situate you all with what you're doing in these 17 days. So I'm just gonna keep going in the same order. Um, Pan, what does Galley do for 17 days on the ship? Um, she's gonna take the time to like, now that she's like, you know, she's she's stuck here. She's gonna take time to actually like, you know, get to know the people and like look around. She's trying to be cool, but she's mm -hmm. excited. Okay. Um, she wants to get to know like her crew mostly. Okay. Um, so she's gonna be trying to like hang out with them. She's a little obnoxious because she's young, so don't know how much they actually want to hang out with her. Okay. Um, okay, so um, I, I will do this though. Uh, so we do have some NPC interaction. Um, now we'll do that on the planet. Let's get to the planet. So, okay, you spend 17 days just socializing. Uh, there's plenty, as you look at the beds, there are 27 different NPCs. Uh, there are way more than 27 beds. So you can set yourself up in your own bunk. I feel like uh, you being the advisors would have the first pick of this top bridge area, uh, this top floor. Um, but yeah, you spend 17 days, you know, people come and go, people check in with you. There's a lot of excitement around most people of what they want to do, what what's the first thing they're going to do. You know, they're kind of like talking your ear off at times and maybe you talk their ear off uh, about any plans you might have that we can uh, explore, but okay. Um, I'm not looking at the thing. Who is next? Jeff, I think. Yeah, so Tomo is going to spend a lot of time meditating. I'm, I'm assuming that Hull doesn't have a designated uh, cabin since they're kind of a <laughs> stowaway. Uh, so Tomo <laughs> will offer to let uh, Hull share cabin with them. Okay. Uh, but 
you're gonna find that Tomo spends a lot of time in in the cabin uh, meditating, and so uh, you'll you'll hear him like in the middle of uh, the like sleeping hours, uh, quietly chanting to themselves. Energy is motion. Resistance is protection. Energy is change. Yeah, he did this for like two days and then in like <laughs> his pillow and then like went to find a spot in like the cargo bays where he'd have more room and it might be quiet. Okay. <laughs> right on. Okay, so a, a lot of contemplation, meditation. Uh, very well. I think uh, I think you're probably given a wide berth, uh, but eventually some people are going to like poke their head in. So you will, you know, you're, if you have like a downtime activity in mind, uh, I'm not really. You sure. could just kind of roll with it, but yeah, you spend you spend your time mostly to yourself. All right, you're going to be having an answer to a lot of these people, so maybe this quiet time is uh, necessary for the journey to come. So okay. Um, how about Rora? Rora's gonna spend, like, maybe the first half or so, or half of each day talking to people, and she knows some of the people because they were also employees, so, you know, it's, she's excited and she's going to be talking about, you know, can you believe that we're doing this, this adventure? You know, there's so many things that, you know, I'm looking forward to. And then the other thing is she's going to be doing, like, paperwork. She's okay. going to be going over all of the stuff in preparation <laughs> of landing. Okay. So she's going to, like, have an idea as to how this is supposed to function when they actually arrive. Excellent. Cool. Yeah, you have plenty of time. Not a lot of people will bother you, except for that Isoki female named Diedrich. I maybe didn't give the name, but Diedrich definitely comes in and... Uh, uh, Badgers, not badgers you, but she's definitely trying to micromanage and, you know, giving her observations on these, on these things. And you know her as being a very sly person. She's got lots of years uh, with Zen Elite Labs doing this kind of work. So um, I don't know what sort of rapport you have with her. We can explore that. But uh, definitely for the trip, you know, if, if she's not uh, badgering her assistant, Balco, She's uh, making sure, you know, oh, and, and another thing, and just, you know, that... But I did that already. Yes. But did you consider... I did. And that just a lot. So, okay. <laughs> so the, the bluntness of you and the kind of um, uh, simpering, sickly sweetness that doesn't feel real at all. I guess I, I'm just going to come out and say it now for those. I saw some people that did get my references earlier. I'm modeling Diedrich off of Kai Wynn from Star Trek DS9. Oh, shudders. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been binging it, uh, not just for preparation, but just because like she's such a compelling person in that I hope I'm conveying it properly or is as good as I'm going to give you, to be perfectly honest with you. But just that, just that smile that never reaches the eye, that judgment that's always quick that alternative that you probably already considered but she's just going to make sure it's heard by everyone so we can work as a team so that's <laughs> on how the you turn on, uh, on, on the plus side i don't notice the judgment okay because i'm not paying that much attention to <laughs> so i'm just kind of like yeah uh, it's done it's an immovable object and a thingy force unstoppable <laughs> force yeah <laughs> awesome so, I think at um, one point Gally wanders in, sees him, and goes, "Nope," and just like turns around. <laughs> Very good, a hundred percent. So uh, you said so that was the first half. What about the second half? That was when I was going to be hanging out with the rest of the crew and talking. And yep, yep. a lot of people are excited. About halfway through, uh, like everyone has access. Well. I'll say not everyone has access, but most people have access. It's been communicated. Seventeen days. You know, buckle up. You don't. You wouldn't tell people like we don't know how long it's going to be. You're just going to have to trust us. We'll get there. But so everyone knows. But I feel Fine. like Fine. yeah, yeah. I feel like <laughs> halfway to two thirds of the way through, maybe some people's nerve is starting to falter. Maybe some people's uh, idiosyncrasies start to grate. Uh, roommates swap. Um, we, we do have a couple. Uh, uh, there, there is at least one newlywed couple who spend the majority of the time in their own private bunk. Um, there's just a lot of activity. Um, 
What about you, Hole? How are you spending 17 days as the the biggest stowaway ever? <laughs> <laughs> the most subtle. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I imagine that for him, a lot of his time would be trying to incredibly subtly figure out where exactly this thing is going and what exactly will be happening there. And by incredibly subtly, I mean, like, it's so obvious every time he talks to anyone. Uh, so, you know, that's part of it. He's definitely going to get tired of people talking every time he walks in on, like, Rora and, uh, you know, the two of them going at it. He also just kind of, like, turns around, leaves. Uh, <laughs> I imagine he'd hang out with Galley a mm -hmm. fair amount because, you know, kind of mellow. It's like, as far as this group goes, definitely more chill. Yeah, and then anytime he gets done... <laughs> Go ahead, sorry. Nothing, she's, she's happy to do so because she definitely feels a little bit lost. But it's sure. smart to hang out with a guy who's 13 foot tall. <laughs> <laughs> this is like you as in. <laughs> you guys immediately formed a bond as you like sat on one of his legs to pilot. Uh, <laughs> and I think the rest of his time would be trying to like work out so that he could just like get out that energy of being stuck in one place for way too long okay cool that's 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 excellent so i think that's going to kind of wrap up with some of the things i have so um you Stop. all that you mentioned uh like actual downtime activities is that should uh, i tell if, you, if you which one i want to do because i pulled uh, them up if you yeah, if you have one that you are that you adamant would absolutely like to do, there sure, there is definitely one that I would like to try. So uh, because it's it is literally meditation. Uh, explore okay. futures. Okay. So I can attempt a mysticism check, uh, focusing on a particular creature. In this case, I'm going to pick Hull because they are the oh, most nice. unknown right now. The wild um, card. Yeah, and so if I the check is t ten plus one and a half their level. And if I succeed, then uh, for the following day, they can re-roll one d20 roll. Okay. What? Uh, guess, uh, while you do <laughs> Wait, that, any roll? It just says on during they can re-roll one d20 roll during the following day. You can gain this benefit once per day. Holy okay. crap! That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. So and I'm I, gonna I, need it. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna roll mysticism here, and I think uh, since I didn't use sidereal influence for the other one, uh, since he is meditating, he would have it activated for this. So I'm gonna add that, and that's gonna be a twenty for that check, which I think succeeds. Nice. It's TC fifteen. Yeah. Or yeah. Uh, excellent. So yeah. Um, so before we push on, I do want to shout out, we did, I saw one raid, uh, JStation64, uh, they play uh, in the Manapot Studio streams as well as they play video games. I watched them just uh, to help calm my nerves before this, I was watching them play uh, No Man's Sky and uh, it's, it's their fault nice. that I'm playing that as well. <laughs> um, I've logged far too many hours, uh, but it, it's helped me um, it's, it's just helped, and it's just a great game. It's real fun. <laughs> J Station uh, 64. I don't know if your name's Jay. I just call him J Station. I just call him Station. J Station. Station. Uh, okay, Station. Station. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Station. Mr. Station to just, you. They, they, they also play uh, just a, I'm just going to, uh, a lot of, yeah, uh, a lot of what I'm going to do here is like give back to all the people who've helped hype me up uh, being a podcaster and making this shift. So J Station 64 also streams in. Uh, all that glitters explodes. A Manapot mm -hmm. Studios stream of the Fly for Your Die. Good name. Hey, I checked right? that out. It's a good show. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Um, Mondays, Mondays at twelve thirty ish my time. Uh, J Station, you're in chat. Uh, go ahead and throw those uh, out. But definitely ch check them out. They're great, great group, great, great chill group to watch play. And um, uh, yeah, so. Uh, back to the game uh you passed with the meditation downtime activity uh Wait, can i be watching j station streams like while we're on this 17 day trip to be like <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> absolutely Actually, yeah, I... you know, yeah gary's probably brought up like a bunch of like playthroughs trying to trying to show them show how like mm -hmm. check out this guy here he actually does like a real really good like it's a speed run look see there he jumps twice 
Huh? How do you huh? jump twice? I have to use my wings in order to get some of that. Well, no, it's in the game. He jumps twice and then, okay, you, you press B and you press B again, but you have to press it really fast. How do anyway, I wait. move the character and look around at the same time? These things are too small. Okay, wait one second. And she's gonna get out, um, she's gonna like, um, get out a small game console. And then I guess Carl's just gonna crush it though. Do you have enlarge controller as a spell? <laughs> <laughs> uh, tell you what, uh, what you do have, uh, Galley, is uh, fabricate tech. Oh yeah! And, uh, you could just make an oversized <laughs> exactly. It's, it's a like a novelty that. controller. <laughs> like it's just an enlarged version. It's like you remember when uh, I think Game Boy Advance had that little thing you could like lock it in. <laughs> old school xbox controller <laughs> yeah. yes absolutely just don't give yeah. me the uh n64 one that's got like yeah it's like the try holding thing like, yeah. <laughs> yeah uh Thanks, frog. excellent uh oh skeptic frog is here he's one of my players in the hex grid heroes okay i'm not going to promote myself the entire everyone watching is just really cool and i really appreciate everyone that's shown up uh show yeah love. thanks guys you're awesome, awesome. I, awesome. thanks so much i'm my nerves aren't at all assuaged, but uh, damn it, it's good to see everyone here and having fun. Uh, yeah, so no, seeing people chill has actually helped me out quite a bit. Everyone's good. just like, yeah, you know, everyone's being cool. So thank yeah, you, guys. Too. Me too. Yeah. And the wine. And the wine. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. You can't see it, but there's just four <laughs> empty wine bottles behind Pam. <laughs> Secret weapons. So, um, Tomo, you you uh, did this meditation. Would would whole feel and you guys and i'm free to like interpret things and kind of i'm playing a little more by the rules than i typically do in games because I, I want to play this game and not just homebrew my own crap but like if we want to flavor things a certain way like would whole feel this ability within him i think i'm gonna be like uh obi-wan on this and okay. just like at the moment that the role comes in whole is gonna hear like Trust in the currents. <laughs> what the? <laughs> My control! <laughs> I, I will absolutely use it to try to win at video games. <laughs> Excellent. Um, so, yeah. Um, did anyone else have anything like downtime? I didn't want to like throw more things at you, but uh, that was such a good moment. I did uh, want to showcase that. If anyone. Yeah, does anyone need the list? I have it up. We can, can just we can shout just push. Them out. Yeah, it's, I'm yeah, just gonna push I think on I'm for good this. for now. Yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm fine. So, so the 17 days pass. Uh, you all get to know each other a little more, and we're going to I'm going to let people talk and stuff. But I wanted to get us into the adventure, but I didn't want to just like uh, screen wipe us. Uh, well, there's gonna be screen wipes, but like this. This this is key to it because this is going to be what constitutes your camp. Um, but after 17 days, the countdown timer goes, um, people's, uh, tempers start to flare. I think, you know, before, you know, the last day or so, you know, they start like egging people on like, can we cut this down any quicker and stuff? But eventually the timer does go down the, the little ding around all the ship or something. I don't know. But, um, Hold on, that makes sense. We were basically what he's doing, a, but like, we're done. We're basically in a flying microwave, so it makes sense that it would ding. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but now I, I am overdone. <laughs> we'll go ahead and start piloting to try to get us out of this. Yes. And I can uh, reveal the image that I wanted to share of the ship because it wasn't just your ship that was going on. There are lots of ships going to their respective places, but your ship left Triaxis. Starfinder obviously left from Absalom station uh, and we can get into the other factions that are taking up places um, you're not going to have a lot of neighbors per se but there are people who did set off and have plots of land near-ish you and we're going to explore that just as much as you're going to explore the world and your own settlement but uh, showing an image now of your ship the Burnished Dawn flanked by a small squadron of Triaxian fighter starships uh, kind of providing uh, escort. Uh, they won't be joining you, but the understanding is, you know, you're, you're left with this uh, escort. Uh, and here that is. <laughs> That's the thing. We are just a toaster flying through space. <laughs> yes. Look at that window screensaver. 
<laughs> yes. Um, yeah, the, the ship's just gonna start bouncing around and go off the corners. <laughs> Never yep. hits exactly in the corner, though. Yep. yep. No, uh, no. This is, uh, except for the, the god awful uh, stars that I did, this is uh, your ship's art with the art for the planet of Waydana. Uh, beautiful green land masses, big, expansive water features, lots of cloud cover. Um, you have arrived, and now I have to actually look at notes. What? Yeah. All right, I'm gonna try not to put it down in the water. Where do we want to go? At uh, uh, the the not the water. Just like, <laughs> should I aim for the green thing? No, those are trees. Those are trees. Right. <laughs> right. Right. No. <laughs> not many on tracks. It's good. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Okay, just there, just there. It's like a big flat band. Right there? Right, yeah. <laughs> As you are doing this, Hull, um, not quite going to move you in maps yet, but uh, an NPC who the three of you know pretty well already is uh, one named Arizand Shire, a human. And I'm going to show their art. Arizand Shire. Yes, Arizand Shire. Sounds like they should be a halfling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought that too. Um, maybe a missed opportunity. Yeah, but uh, this is uh, the fella on the cover. I have a better picture of the cover. Cover art, that's what I called that one. This this man shows up. Uh, and Jeff, if you could uh, position the art so it's optimal, if you don't mind. Yep. Uh, this human uh, walks in. They're wearing uh, kind of a maybe inspired by April O'Neil from the 80s TMNT cartoon. Maybe not, but that's the first vibe I got. They walk in and they have a, a mobility aid in one arm. Uh, they walk up, they're just covered in uh, cybernetic uh, techie stuff. Uh, those of you that are supposed to be here uh, know this as uh, Arizan Shire. Um, they're going to be kind of the liaison between you and Zenalidi Labs. Uh, they walk up, uh, little goggles on the face, and I have to do my first voice, so everyone prepare. Let's go. Yeah, let's I'm go. hype. Let's do this. <laughs> um, below you is uh, the land chartered for you to uh, settle on. Scans show that a uh, rainstorm recently swept through this area. So as you're kind of like, this is you as the ship is descending into the atmosphere, you see your area kind of coming up beneath you and um, I will show that art in just a moment. But before that, Erzan Shire, uh, your patron's advisor, uh, walks into the bridge and kind of taps uh, their mobility aid against the door. It's a, it's a great place for our new home, uh, isn't it? Uh, I've just correlated the local survey data to find the best sites for our initial settlement. There are three, actually, and uh, you being the advisors, and like you, you just catch the briefest flicker of eyes at Hull. The final <laughs> choice will be yours. Uh, the young man uh, pulls out a rough overland map, which I, I lean have. over to Hull and I say, just pick whichever one you think you can land on. <laughs> no, I, yeah, I got, I got this. Um, the, the ship's coming in like kind of sideways. <laughs> <laughs> And I think I might actually have to move you maps because when I, I prep this part, uh, this, this is going to be the hex map that you are all uh, exploring on. So Ooh. I'm going to move you to that map. Ooh. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm ready. I'm ready. Oh, man. It. There are so many. We've been stuck things. on the ship for 17 days. <laughs> Get me off. Yes. How so... I've broken my console five times. I had to keep a character. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yes. Um, we don't currently Thank goodness have you're so vision. good at it. <laughs> right. Yeah, we're uh, uh, yep. black screen currently. We have no yep. token. Yep. When I made this map, I uh, didn't know that rule. So I'm going to just plop each of you on. Uh, just so. Oh, God. Too we're big. huge. <laughs> this planet is so much smaller than they said in the. I'm program. sorry. I landed us on the wrong planet. This is a moon. This is a small moon. A <laughs> small moon. Okay. How's that, everyone? <laughs> I apologize. Yeah, I, um, my my. You can uh, also you can make us invisible. We'll still have vision though. So you just uh, oh, will we? right click on us and click the little hooded figure, and we can turn invisible. 
Okay. Oh, nice. It's not really letting me do that at this time. So uh, just okay. This is the map. Uh, so uh, this is my first game using Foundry, and my skills have drastically improved since starting. So this is the site below you as you're descending. Uh, Arizan Shire brings up the the Overland map, and uh, three glowing circles in hexes uh, notate the. Uh, uh, options for uh, best that the scans have determined these would be the best places to set up your initial settlement. So uh, I have a little bit more flavor text to give you, but uh, so you all can see that. Ah, oh, great place for a home, isn't it? I mean, it's flat. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Well, it's, it's flat <laughs> here, of course, but it gets bigger in the mountains, and that's one of the options. Uh, but this one here, and he points to the furthest north one. Uh, the forest edge. Uh, this one's got lots of timber and game, but no easy access to minerals. This lakeshore site down here has access to fish and minerals in the lake's banks. Lake's banks, that's a choice. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> that sounds is, like a golf course. <laughs> writing that down. Uh, uh, but it's far from timber. This mountain pass far over here in the west. Uh, is close to several mining deposits, but could be short on game. Um, but everyone's kind of eager to land and start offloading. Uh, where where will it be? Did you say the first one had access to timber and game? Yes. Or just timber? But timber no, no. and game. So uh, no minerals. Yeah. 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 So uh, this this is the option. So before I push on, I should uh, shout out Paizo, of course, for making this. Ron Lundine for writing this, and Jason Keeley, and the rest of the Star Chamber, and all those involved with making it. So if if I take little shots at Lake Spanks, that's not a direct attack. It's just <laughs> the way it rolls off my tongue. This is a fantastically <laughs> written adventure, and I'm a clown. Don't worry. Uh, they have, they have I'm, say, I'm I am sure it's fucking great. Thanks. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna be attacking it with that golf yeah. club, baby. What are you doing about it? <laughs> so, um, the the one to the uh, north northern mo northeastern most, the one in the forest itself. How do I do Northwest. a little ping? Uh, hold Whoa, jeez. Whoa, no. holy crap. <laughs> hold, hold. Uh, That's X, terrifying. Yeah. There we go. That one. Uh, that one is, um, this one will be forced. It will have apps, access to uh, timber all around you and plenty of game for gathering food. Um, I'm going to I'm gonna give some information and some stuff you're just going to have to figure out, but in choosing, your characters would know, yes, it's right there by the timber in the game, and mechanically that means when you develop uh, uh, an adjacent hex as something else, uh, that that type will be without needing to purchase any with any cost. So, um, with the forest one, here, let me... Um, can I just ask real quick as well, how large is each hex? Like how much? Good question, yes. So uh, the, the plot that you have entirely is about 10,000 square miles. Um, each hex is 12 miles across. And um, where you place your settlement, it's not going to take up the entire 12 miles. What I'm going to do is like ask you in relation to, like, are you closer to the edge of the forest here? Or are you closer to the lake in another one? Or are you closer to the foothills of the mountain or further away kind of thing? We're going to be a little nebulous about it to make it pop. But uh, the way he exploration rules work, we'll get into. But for now, uh, there there is a, there would be a landing spot. It's not full forest, but uh, you would be able to readily clear some timber for construction. Um, okay. These right. ships, yeah, the, these components of this ship are going to be used for the, like the base operations, different labs. It will be up to you and the other settlers to make homes and construct other buildings. So um, there, there's give and take on each of the hexes. So access to um, forest edge, if you choose that, you will, uh, if you want to establish a resource node, uh, and resource nodes will be uh, next to a forest. Uh, resource node would be a lumber node. Mines would be, uh, you can set up a mine there. Resource nodes are going to be used for this. Um, so the forest one will be, you can you get access to that for free. Uh, free. You won't use resource points to do it. Right. Um, the one to the far, the furthest east, that's the lakeshore site. Um, uh, I guess I can. Yeah, I did read all that. So there will be uh, access to the water. You'll be, you can be, uh, you can't be like right on the edge, but there's a nice, beautiful shelf 
above this lakeside area that does have access to minerals, does have access to fresh water, but uh, it would be about 12 miles to the nearest big timber source, if that makes sense. There may be trees here and there, but as far as resources, you could choose the lakeside one as more like, and you know, setting up a lakeside one, you'll have access to aquatic hexes for free, uh, access to food as well, mm. uh, but you would need to travel for building supplies like timber. The last site, the mountain pass site, uh, you wouldn't need uh, a resource point to build up a mountain hex, like a mine or something, um, but it did say that the mountain pass has several minimal, mineral deposits, but high up in the mountains, there may not be as much opportunity for food and game. Um, so, I think uh, pointing at the map, um, guesses, if we were to uh, set up here by the river, in theory, we could set up some kind of like water-based um, travel system that would get us to pretty much the whole map pretty quickly. I yeah, that. Okay. Uh... That looks like a good idea. Besides, uh, winds over those mountains, uh, probably not good for landing. And, uh, yeah, the, the tall green things, maybe we avoid that. So, yeah, yeah, yeah that's, uh, that looks good. Looks good. Sounds, yeah, uh, yeah. sounds right. Like, sounds she, she, easy she to quietly land. quietly and politely, like, moves Hull's claw slightly so they're, like, not <laughs> living anymore. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm in, of the same mind. I agree. The access to food and water will be most beneficial for most organic life forms that are aboard this station, this settlement. I mean, it's true, Thomas, but you say it's so creepy. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm he sorry, he probably right. doesn't mean it, it's fine. <laughs> Excellent. So, um... Rora, how about you? What, what's Rora's thoughts on everything? No, I think that's really good. Um, water and food is most important, probably, for most people, so that's great. <laughs> and that gives us <laughs> options. That way we're not too far from the forest for timber, and it's a little further for the minerals, but we might not need those immediately anyways. We have the sea minerals, or the lake minerals. Uh -huh. Very good. Okay. So uh, Arizan Shire gives a smile, a wink, and he uh, puts the data pad away. Uh, he just kind of walks over to the side of the bridge, sets himself down, and buckles himself in. Um, and everyone should probably do that. <laughs> <laughs> so at this point, uh, you can, uh, it's, it's a simple, simple button. I don't need any computers checks. You can't mess this up. I should have said that. <laughs> oh, oh, but I can try. Oh, yeah. But <laughs> there is an automated procedure where uh, the ship starts, and like everyone starts to like fill the uppermost deck uh, as uh, this, this, this automated procedure begins and the cargo bays uh, start uh, disassembling from the burnished dawn into the frameworks that's going to serve as uh, the first few prefabricated buildings. Uh, the bridge. So this thing is transformering on us, like. <laughs> it's it's less transforming and more like just like uh, Kit Kat bar, just breaking off and like flying <laughs> down below. <laughs> but, I, I uh, watched one fly off. That wasn't me. <laughs> no. It's okay. That's intentional. Yep. Yeah. Right. right. It, yes. It is intentional, right? Yes, it was. Yep. So, uh, so those of you in the bridge, which is you and Arizan Shire, everyone else kind of like in their segments, kind of breaks off down and lands. You see them go and up, flying high above. Uh, the bridge actually functions as a single-use shuttlecraft during this. So this will be this is your lodgings unless you build something. Um, outside of this, if you want to build a log or stone home or whatever, but this 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 upper bridge area with the restrooms, I should say, uh, will be a is a shuttlecraft. So you're kind of floating above it all. They're all kind of setting down in that area once you gave your selection. I would and... like a lakefront property, please. <laughs> <laughs> See what I can do. <laughs> Excellent. So, uh, you know, all the, the, the crew and the passengers uh, of the, the, the flanked fighter starships kind of like hang above for a while and eventually they turn around, head back, and you see them kind of like disappear back into the drift plane. You are now on your own in this bridge. Uh, Hull, give me a pretty easy piloting check to set this <laughs> shuttle down. You have a reroll if you need it. <laughs> and and, uh, and I can give aid if you want. 
Please do. <laughs> yeah, are we doing the same thing you as say, before? Yeah, it's pretty easy. So, mm, we'll see. Nobody wants to tell how not to pilot, but you know, they're also like, oh, if you press that button, maybe we'll land. <laughs> maybe uh, a potential title for this series could have been uh, Horizons Unknown Hedging Our Bets. <laughs> <laughs> so, probably for the best. Yeah, go ahead and give me that A check, Galley. Uh, 19. Okay, smashed it. Nice. Now. Encourage? No encouraging this time. Sorry. Okay, no <laughs> worries, no worries. Listen, you're encouraging me with your presence, which equates to that reroll. All right. <laughs> so, will the 10 suffice? <laughs> I'm nothing if not consistent. Is like, it... and I'm afraid to do the reroll because it might be worse. What, what is your piloting accuracy? <laughs> Plus one. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> All right. So is that a 10 with the aid included? That is a total of a 10, yes. Okay. It's a little rocky, actually, <laughs> believe it or not. But um, as, as you're flying down, like... What are you like, doing? The I get flight. on the intercom. Everyone, please remain calm <laughs> as we depart. Winds are picking up real bad right the, now. Everybody the, hang on. The, 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 the fast and no belt way. sign comes on. <laughs> Anyone near a scanner can see that it is a still summer <laughs> afternoon. <laughs> We're the experiencing some turbulence. <laughs> you are... It's not windy at all. Yeah, the, the weather's fine. You are rocketing down, and uh, you see, like, I got this, I got this. As you get closer, you start to see the other components of this starship. Like, it's, it, these are a little more transformer like, in that, like, the sides, like, break down and, like, start to, like, auto start to build themselves up. And you see, as you're flying down, that the people are already uh, disembarking from their segments. And uh, if there's their section, they're going to start to, like, it's kind of like an RV camper prefabricated buildings like they need to assist a little bit but largely it's so you see this as you're rocketing down and when you touch down you touch down with a little jarring crunch we don't you even need to set the foundation it's good <laughs> so yeah this area. Flat, i flattened the area so yep. we'll be perfect yep the way you set down is uh the if you're looking out the cockpit view window you see the, the glittering lake before you. Uh, you land, this whole area is kind of on a large, stable shelf, and that's part of the reason the scan is dictated. This would be a good spot, wink. Um, but you set down, there's an enormous glittering lake in front of you, not uh, a blade of grass moving from any atmospheric wind at all. Um, but in the far distance, you, start, you see the, 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 the mountains in the far distance. And, um, ship powers down engines you power the ship down you are free to uh disembark and i, I have a map to put you on yep tomo maybe flies like, like a toaster you didn't think there. it was possible for an ooze to like stiffen up <laughs> <laughs> but, but you see tomo like visibly relax once the ship stops moving okay you um, solidify. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I do have uh, a question. Um, not terribly important, but for, for posterity's sake, uh, Erzan Shire follows you all to the, the exit ramp of this shuttle. Um, who's going to be the first of you to uh, walk out onto this new alien world first? I'm fine with it. Yeah, I'll do it if no one stops me. It, it, it's, yeah, there's, it's just, <laughs> just, just uh, placing an order. I'll go. Yeah, no, I'll, uh, <laughs> I will yeah, pick fine. up Tomo and put them <laughs> on my shoulder and we'll go together. Like, and then I put Felix on my shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> Episode one, we're already stacking things. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Uh, so, okay, I'm going to now move you to the map as I activate and play some music. Let me know if this is too loud. All right, I'm going to pause that one. So that... Okay. But uh, the air's in. Is, every, is the volume okay here? It's a little loud on my end, but I think that's just it's my... It's a system. little loud. I'm not sure how it's coming through on stream, but... Okay. Okay, I'm going to turn, turn mine, it down. So... down already. Um, Thank you. Not sure okay. the stream's doing though. Cool. Yeah, stream, uh, let us know if it's too loud. 
yeah and also uh thank you for uh hanging out everyone uh we're, we're going to be winding down here soon we go until uh, uh 8 p.m uh eastern so this is actually uh i didn't time this uh, intentionally this way, but this is perfect. So, uh, stepping out, Arizan Shire stands by and says, oh, one of you all should be the first to set down, just marking the occasion. And you see them pull up, like activate on their goggles a recording device of this monumentous occasion as the door opens up and a green field greets you all around. And it's, it's just beautiful. You hear uh, in, the, in the pretty short distance, they're about a hundred feet away that uh everyone's busy getting to work you kind of, kind of overseeing it from where you've landed uh the ship well, and uh, uh, it's hull or do you, does has your character told us that they go by hull or do they introduce themselves uh, as different yeah i i imagine that it would have come out over the course of this like he he his he knows his name is long so he goes by hull because he's as big as a ship and twice as tough Oh, yeah. <laughs> Gary makes so, several notes. <laughs> All right, well, you know, with Tomo on his shoulder, he will step out, like not probably really realizing that it's monumentous. He's he's done some stuff in his life, so he just kind of steps out unceremoniously on the planet. Okay, so yeah, that happens. You step out, beautiful green grass, fresh air, not a wind. To be felt <laughs> and uh, uh died down when we oh wow, yeah that that storm you were talking about really just uh calmed right down yeah cleared up it's oh good. it was a localized storm very localized wind from the mountains you know <laughs> gotta watch out for that and uh hull uh when you landed you know you landed where you needed to go it was a little rough there was a little crunching sound uh but you hear more crunching sounds now as bursting out of the ground Apparently, I didn't make uh -oh. fun tokens actually, can I, before. Can I say well, beforehand that I'm actually, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm hanging back. I'm, I'm hanging back? I'm hanging back because <laughs> I'm, I'm filming this and, and muttering um, like a narration as uh, everyone okay. sets off the ship. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Can we get a little so, clip uh, of that narration? I just want to test yeah, it. Oh, yeah, yeah sure. please. Yeah, what's that like? <laughs> uh, okay, she held up enough. The explorers uh, come to this strange new world. What will they find here? Will there be treasures? Will there be... Hulk, could you move? You are so big. You are so big, I can't... Ah, damn. She to it off the left? To... No! Okay. No, you're just, just <laughs> away. Just away from... Oh, never mind. <laughs> Uh, uh, and that Town happens, train. and uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's like no uh, whole, whole move, and then um, <laughs> and then um, Laura's in the way as well because she's also massive. She's like, it's like a, <laughs> it's fine, forget it. It's constantly a forced perspective with those two. Like, they have to be twenty feet further away in order to fit in the frame. <laughs> I thought it was I thought it was the lake, but it's just Laura. So I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that glittering lake was actually Laura's uh, glittering crystalline of them, yeah. yeah. Uh, but uh, as you sat as you sit down and you come out and you start to take your few first few steps out wow that was a sentence in my own mind uh bursting from the ground are uh orangish yellowish creatures they uh clearly they 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 dig out you see like little furrows they have dug out from under your ship and you have landed on a nest of some creature and we're going to close things off with all of you rolling for initiative. Oh, and then we're gonna down oh okay. because I have these, made first contact. I found these them. Armored beetles. I'm going to show. Uh, a Are there like blown up some some red slippers underneath the ship? <laughs> <laughs> we well, Hull just like takes a foot and just like pushes it under a little more. <laughs> Nope. Yeah, you see six of these creatures dig themselves up out of the ground, kind of like mouths clacking. Oh, I need a click. I only see three. Uh -huh. Oh, my oh. God. Is no, I, I, they're kind of cute. They're kind of cute. Yeah, these things dig up. Uh, their, their front paws covered in dirt kind of look like the hands of like a vole. Yeah. Uh, but they have like yeah, little uh, squishy mouth claws. parts, little, little uh, insectoid creatures, and they're scuttling at you. Uh, no, I was, after a second look, I definitely want one as a pet. 
Right, exactly. <laughs> uh, Mark no picked up in the chat. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lucker. That's, yes, <laughs> yes, indeed. And that is, uh, we're going to leave things off with, uh, we can roll initiative now and just, I can uh, create, uh, oh, I see some people have already started. So go ahead and roll for initiative. We can show everyone uh, that now as we start to wind things down, oh, but we're going to- first initiative roll. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, those of you who have never foundried before, uh, right click on your token and then click on the crossed swords that adds you to the initiative order. And then uh, on the right-hand menu, there's like a raised fist, and that is the initiative tracker. You can roll from in there. Yeah, and it looks like if you roll, you can do like a, a hidden roll for that too. So, you know, cool. make sure you reveal that when you're done. Nice, mm -hmm. well, I don't see my, my raised fist. The, the, the sidebar, like where the oh, chat cross is. swords, gotcha. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, cross swords. The on icon token. on your token, and then and go then over to the fist sidebar. in the. Yeah, you. Cool. And uh, it looks like I have a little bit of work to do on mine. I need to assign them different. Uh, I just I just pulled it and then duplicated it. So I will be rolling initiative for my own. But uh, let's see what you all do, and uh, we can start to wrap things up. I do want to wrap a little earlier so we can get to all the thank yous, go around and talk about where we can each find everyone. Uh, and thank you all again for viewing us. Yeah, I've had a blast. The nerves went away about six and a half seconds ago. Um, <laughs> just in time no, nailed it the second you announced that there was going to be combat then it was yep. gone <laughs> just like i know how to kill people um and jeff is there a way i can display this combat tracker so people can see it i can i think i can pull it up for the tabletop uh feed there we go um figure out where i want to put it uh, over there looks good yeah uh, i do see in chat that some people are giving uh helpful uh, tips on foundry i am learning um but i've never used this before actually i've been using roll 20 this is nice yeah it's very nice a lot of fun yeah, features it's very customizable um, foundry if you want to sponsor us hit us up <laughs> yes foundry come on <laughs> absolutely yeah, come on. Uh, yeah why not? i know at least one foundry maker is in the like chat right now they got oh, no way. I, I love foundry <laughs> oh, guys <it's> just, mm. <laughs> no, no that's yeah. wishful thinking Don. <laughs> <laughs> right uh excellent so uh we this is where we're going to head off next session we're going to pick up with initiative this fight as you just get to the planet the first thing you have to do uh the, and this scene kind of fades out not yeah kind of like cuts to black with these creatures leaping out from the ground and in the distance someone shouts oh gross bugs and um <laughs> wow, that's kind of wow, where, uh, where we're gonna end things so um go around the All table right. i'll do myself last but uh jeff yeah. hit us up where can we find you yeah so uh you can find myself and adam uh at emergencypowernetwork.com or on twitter at emergency pwr pod cool did i do it in the wrong order uh yeah i should have done pan first pan how about you oh sure <laughs> um you can find me um on twitter at stella encore um you can hear me playing um baphomet on cosmopunk uh podcast um yeah um, promote them all go for it yeah we, uh, yeah we have okay. the time go for it please all right well actually no actually first thing i'd like to say like thanks don for like banging this out and and jeff as well because like a lot of this technical stuff pff, over my head yeah so, thanks, um, guys. like you know yeah, this you guys is real cool, awesome. guys. cheers and thanks to the audience as well because it was really nice having thank people, like, you yeah stuff. yeah um, no definitely it was super cool yeah this was this was thanks fun so much but um yeah you can find me on um on cosmopunk podcast um spectre in the fog um morning blues yeah that's it and here of course um yeah thanks and follow me on stella on core on twitter and tell me how much you like um beans beans yeah what? <laughs> Who doesn't like beans? dude i love beans i gotta get on there if you'll tweet me and tell me how much you love beans then we're not friends oh i'm gonna go <laughs> beat right now hold on right. yeah hold right on, on. Jeff, and whoever from, tweets it from first. our emergency power <laughs> is oh, the best shoot. is the closest friend so uh, yeah yeah <laughs> Huh? Carrie, uh, how about you? How, where can we find you online? Hi, I'm Carrie. Um, I can be found at www.criticalhitcookies.com and I can be found on Twitter at hitcookies or at Carrie Vobrin. 
Excellent. Thank you. Nice. And, and, and do and, and do hit them up. Uh, they they legit are. I bought uh, I, I bought some, and then she gifted me some ones. Uh, and, and they're they're just great. Uh, a lot it's of always good uh, to bribe the GM. It, it works. <laughs> uh, the the TTRPG themed ones. Uh, my favorite so far have been the Fly for Your Pie. Um, <laughs> Yeah, you gotta love, love a good pun Ooh. with your yeah. delicious yeah. treat. Uh, and, and Karen, give us a couple names of other ones because you 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 put a lot of heart. They they taste so good. I I think I may have one or two more dark chocolate <laughs> ones in the kitchen uh, after this stream. But uh, you want to drop a couple other cool names? You're putting me on the spot. There's 50 of them. Oh, well, I can't keep up. Oh, no. <laughs> tell, tell us <laughs> here. How about this? Because I know Adam avoids sugar. So tell us about a sugar-free option. They are literally titled "Sugar Free Chocolate." <laughs> oh, yeah, nice. uh, not all of them are it? not all of them are witty. Some of them are just flat out. This is what's in the cookie. Yeah, I, that's uh, okay, something I'm gonna that even Hulk could figure out. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll, I'll propose, so if you need a catchy name for your sugar free ones, you can call it "Fly Sugar Free or Die." No, but then she's going to fly for your pie one. That sounds... Yeah, I, I think it's a bit of an overlap on that. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That's no, the man. sugar-free version. I, I know you have... Uh, you do holiday cookies. You're taking holiday orders. You are just I am baking up a store. I am taking holiday orders. We have some holiday assortments. We have yes. five different assortments. We've got a chocolate, a spice, a fruit, a classic, and an eclectic for the adventure yeah. summit. Eclectic. Adventurous people <laughs> in the crowd. Ooh, yeah. Nice. They, the, I, I've only had uh, a couple of the varieties so far, but I've loved every single bite of everyone I've had. Uh, that's not why I invited her to play this, but uh, <laughs> damn it. If, if you're going to hear me promote me and my friends, you're going to hear my friend promote her cookie baking business. So thank you so much. Uh, cri uh, criticalhitcookies.com? Yeah. Cool. And Damn. Adam? Uh, yeah, first off, you can find us on Twitter, like Jeff said, emergency PWRPOD. Uh, you can also find me personally at uh, on Instagram. Uh, I'm doing some art stuff on there. I'm posting a piece. I'm trying to do like 30 pieces of art over the next month-ish. And so I just started with that, and that's at... Uh, the underscore ashen underscore arts so feel free to check me out follow me there if you like any of the art that i did for the characters here you're going to see more stuff like that and we'll see how far i can get you know <laughs> yeah Excellent. and uh i've been don your gm uh that was uh i will, I will say that was supposed to be a, a jimmy stewart accent for airs and shire i did uh watch yeah, some cheap. clips of it's a wonderful life um uh, I, I've been the GM for this. You can find me elsewhere uh, doing Starfinder, being the GM for Hexgrid Heroes, a homebrew Starfinder podcast that released every Sunday. Uh, you can find me playing Pathfinder 2E on Monday evenings at 6.30 Pacific time. I play a uh, kobold swashbuckler. Um, yeah, and it's kobold. That's, it's great. Yeah, that's that's about it for now. Uh, there may be I, other I do want to throw one thing in there. Um, Please. Mark likes music. Asked if I'm doing commissions. Uh, yeah, I'm gearing up to start doing that. So feel free to hit me up if you have any art you want me to do, and uh, we can figure out something. Yeah, awesome. Uh, so yeah, that's been me. Uh, we will be back in two weeks. Uh, I don't have a fun plucky uh, sign off just yet, but don't worry, we'll, we'll find get one. something. Yeah, yeah. Let's fly. Um, <laughs> let's let's fly. fly works for me. It, I'll pilot. pilot. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> the best part is, is just like, Gally could pilot easily, oh. but she just doesn't want it <laughs> over my call. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, that works for him because he will just keep doing it. <laughs> something I would like to do. So uh, vamp a little bit while I look for someone to raid because uh, as friend of the show, Krifu Bernal said, it's very helpful to uh, raid. We're, we're a tiny stream. Here. So I'm gonna look for someone, preferably playing Starfinder, to raid. Yeah, get them, get them raids. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. But uh, you guys vamp a little bit. Talk a little bit about uh, stuff you want your characters to do. People uh, you're not excited to meet. Uh, projects. How's how's everyone feeling now that they have some fresh air? Uh, this was this so good. much like, fun. Yeah, yeah this was, no, this, this was a lot of fun. Like I couldn't have asked for like a more fun stream to start doing Twitch stuff on. Like, this was a blast. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I, I chose this character so that I could be a big, dumb punch dragon. And like, it's just gonna allow me to have fun in this. And like, I'm already loving the chemistry of all these characters. Like, I'm so excited. 
Yeah, I'm having a lot of fun. I really like that um, that um, Tomo is is so literal, <laughs> like the, the meditation. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then how she's like, I'm gonna go to the other room. <laughs> I can't do this. No matter how many pillows I shove on my head, it's not enough. <laughs> Their voice is so deep too; it just carries yeah, through so everything. Do the, vo do the voice you again. Can't... Do the voice again. <sighs> the longer the trip oh, goes, the more I it see. clears out around you. Is is this kind of like a George Takai inspired by any chance? Because I'm getting some of those vibes. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> yeah. No, I, like um... that, I like that. Vore is like ready to take on like the the administrative stuff. <laughs> Without I'm so excited. <laughs> Mark likes me. Yeah, but like, says, you're totally oh gonna my. learn it. <laughs> I'm just gonna yeah, do no, it by, you know, you're all gonna be like, yeah, here's more paperwork, and I'm gonna be like, okay. <laughs> that oh, is perfect, because oh no, that's, that's exactly like when paperwork comes up. It'll come to Hull, and he will pass it right to you without even looking at it. <laughs> it's like a line. It goes to Hull, then it goes to Tomo, then it goes to Kai. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I will go first, and I will pick things up, but I'm not going to read it. <laughs> I'm going to deliver the paperwork. <laughs> okay, I have found someone who we're going to uh, raid in just a moment. Awesome. Um, mm. But uh, I do want to thank everyone for uh, showing up. Uh, thank you thank for taking you. a George Takai voice, because... Um, I was going to use it for <laughs> what something, but I, I like. <laughs> well, uh, we, we, I was having a conversation with Pan actually about uh, dwarves and how they don't need to be Scottish all the time, and I'm like, what voices can I kind of do? And uh, George Takai was high up there, but I like yours much better, and I, I think mine would just feel flat in comparison. So uh, that dwarven uh, NPC will have a, a name that you'll meet maybe next uh, time. But uh, thank you again, everyone that showed up. Uh, Urban thank Dragon so Dice, I saw you. You did a, a great job writing uh, a recent Cosmopunk uh, uh, season. Uh, yeah, really yeah. enjoyed nice. your stuff. Yeah, yeah they, Skeptic, they, they actually been, he's great. Yeah, Skeptic Frog Games, awesome. he's, he's my guy. He uh, he plays Keat in my podcast. He's a GM for Dice Benders and Avatar The Last Airbender slash Core. Oh, uh, Keat, I love, I love your nice. that's, that's, yep, awesome, that's, that's, dude. that's awesome, dude. That's awesome. Yeah, he's uh, uh, they are currently in hiatus, so it gives you plenty of time to catch up on season one. Season two is forthcoming, but uh, I love hanging out with him. He's a he's a hoot. He's the guy I had to help make a nano site for yesterday, and I just nice. wanted to pull my hair out. Uh, <laughs> Less but, nice. Yeah, and I think I will leave it on on thanking all the people at Paizo that may be watching or who have been friendly with us. Uh, Jason Keeley for developing this, Ron Lundine for writing this one, all the cool art that people did for this, all the writing that went into it. Having a blast. This is a great thing. The shout out section will be a little shorter after the first one, but I just wanted to let everyone know all the cool other podcasts that stopped in to say hi, to support us. Uh, even if you're lurking, I don't, I don't mind. It's, it's like with podcasts. You don't have to listen. It's Good sensor there, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> I don't... I don't care. Yeah. As 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 long as I get the download, the lurk, we're good. That's that's all I need from anyone. You know what? Though? All you all you lurkers, all you lurkers, so we do appreciate it because yes. numbers going up looks nice and we feel better. Yes, and I know we have a yeah. lot of people overseas who this is the middle of the night for uh, or the next day for. Yeah. Uh, so Mark, thank you for sticking with us for that. that. That's awesome. so yeah. cool. Yeah. Uh, that being said, I'm going to close things off. We are going to be raiding uh, Murder Hobo Inc. Uh, right, one of oh. their players, maybe two of their players, um, is uh, in, in the Hexcrete Heroes podcast, Carol, who plays Tally. She's in this one, I believe. Nice. Uh, but if not, they're, they're a lively bunch. They're fun. And uh, if she is there, I think uh, it may blow them away a little bit. So I'm going to click... Ray. Oh, hey, before we go, actually, if What's you're that? not already subscribed, so you don't miss next one, um, subscribe. Oh, right. Or like, like, or what do you do on, on follow? You follow, right? Follow. Yeah. Yeah, do that yeah. thing. We, do were, thing. we were pitching so many things, we forgot to say, thing, like, this guys. channel, too. <laughs> 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 Yep, definitely, uh, definitely follow us on here. Uh, we are going to be at least, at the very least, putting this up on uh, the Hexcrete Heroes YouTube. Uh, we're going to figure out other things of what we can do with it uh, from there. 
but uh, I'm yeah, super we might excited. steal it too. That's fine. <laughs> I just want people to enjoy our game, maybe catch us live. Uh, there will be more fan interaction available as I learn more Twitch tools and stream stuff. Uh, expect points and all that fun jazz you see. And uh, thank you all again. And uh, looking forward to see you all in two weeks.